Today I'm going to be talking about Fujifilm simulations and why they're better than other cameras' picture styles. Our local shop here in Bucharest, F64, lent us a Fujifilm X-T4 for a few days and we got to play with it for a little bit. By far the most impressive feature for me was the film simulations. We're Sony users and this was the first Fujifilm camera we ever tried. First of all, I will start by saying that there are a few arguments, depending on the conditions and type of project you have, in favor of shooting in picture profiles or film simulations, even if you have a camera that can shoot in log. I'm going to explain this more in a different video, since this one is already proving to be more lengthy than I thought. Second of all, loads, if not all the camera manufacturers of low-end professional cameras have some sort of picture presets that you can use. Canon has picture styles, Sigma has color modes, Sony's got picture profiles. Are Fujifilm film simulations really something unique on the market? I think so. So what makes film simulations better? From this point on, there are gonna be technical explanations. If that's not your thing, you can skip this whole bit and go to this chapter conclusion at in order to answer this question, I'll start by actually talking about Sony and how these guys let you change the way your image looks. And then just a little bit of a mention of Sigma FP. Sony's got one of the most versatile systems when it comes to tweaking image parameters. So I'm just gonna assume that everyone else that isn't Fujifilm is offering something similar, give or take, with the aforementioned Sigma FP taking it just a tad further. Without further ado, these are Sony's picture profiles. These guys are essentially certain presets of parameters that Sony thought would be most appropriate in various situations. For example, if you want to bring out the highlight section of your image as much as possible and thus have a greater exposure latitude, you shoot in PP7, which has gamma set to s log 2 and color mode to s gamut. If you want super strong contrast between dark and light portions of the image and need to have the maximum amount of detail in your black gradation change, you can choose the Cine 3 Gamma and so on. So these presets that you get in the picture profiles don't have a really huge color look change from one another, except for saturation. But all is not lost. Sony does give you a whole bunch of different parameters that you can manually change. Starting with things that we saw in, in the preset picture profile like Gamma, color mode and contrast. And continuing with coloring, i.e. saturation, color phase, and color shift on this lovely color wheel. However, these are global settings, which means that they will be applied equally onto the whole image. Yes, but what if I want to emphasize or dim down a single color, you'll ask? If you're not, you can change the luminance of these guys individually. Now good luck learning how to combine 18 global parameters, each of which has between 3 and 64 steps, with 5 individual color depths, each of which has 14 luminance steps to achieve just the perfect look you want for your shot. So the designers of Sigma FP probably looked at this mess and thought, screw it, we can do better. And as such, they gave us color modes. to the significant color changes and their gradations that we see in the film simulations, true, but pretty feeble. Personally, I have issues with what the skin tone looks like on anything other than the neutral and standard color modes. So Sony and other companies that provide the same kind of flexibility give you a lot of space to make your own color profile. Even in terms of technical sciencey stuff, Fujifilm in its film simulations that you get off the shelf does a much finer tuning and plays with a lot more parameters than you can do fiddling around in your camera menu. There is a lot of science involved in color reproduction. Whether we're talking about film stock, then making it to be more or less sensitive to various wavelengths of light, or in this case, how the software of the camera interprets the photons of light that is exposed to. I don't know what the process is with digital cameras, but let's take a quick look at Fujifilm stock, whose looks are emulated in our digital camera. This is just to try to shed some light on how many different things are going on at the same time and just how complex the connections between the parameters that define them are. Here's what Fujifilm stock looks like. 
It has a bunch of different layers, each containing substances that are sensitive to a particular color, and then couplers that will turn into yellow, magenta, and cyan after processing. For these layers, we have different spectral sensitivity curves, which tell us exactly how much blue, green, or red colors they absorb from the light. When we say blue, though, let's not forget, we're not talking about a single color, but actually a whole range of colors. And the same goes for green and red. If we were to split each of these curves into tiny, tiny fragments, we would see that each particular color has a slightly different absorption level. So all of these peaks, the values of the intersection points between the layers and so on, mean something in terms of how your scene's colors will be reproduced. If we then compare the Provia film stock with, say, Velvia, we can see some of the general characteristics that make them different from each other, as well as why each film stock is recommended for certain applications. Provia absorbs more blue in the right side of the curve and red, which are found in the skin tone, whereas Velvia absorbs more green and blue in the middle part of the curve, which is why it's primarily used in landscape. The spectral dye density curves result from the processed exposed color film and represent the total absorption by each color dye. An important thing that they tell us is how saturated or vibrant your colors will be. The less overlap you have between the three curves, the higher the saturation is gonna be. So you can see that Velvia has significantly less overlap between each pair of the curves. Fujifilm describes Velvia as having ultra high color saturation. The other aspect of color science is to do with art with how people perceive colors and what emotional effects certain nuances have on them. Here is the deal breaker that separates Fujifilm from other camera manufacturers. The years of research in color psychology and how they refine their film stock collection again and again based on these discoveries. There are a lot of studies on color psychology or memory of color, which is to say how viewers expect to see a certain scene, how the color should appear in order to enhance a certain emotion. I found this gem of an article on imaging resources, which I've put the link in the description below for you. If you're interested, in there you can find all there is to know about Fuji's film stocks and film simulations. This is what they're saying about the Astia film simulation, for example. Look at all of these fine tunings in the shades of color, slight shifts in hue and saturation of various colors, all designed to create a certain look that leaves you with a certain feel or emotion associated with the scene you're watching. In conclusion of this chapter, Fujifilm, through the color signs they're employing in their film simulations, which involves both a complicated technology part and an experience in color psychology that spans almost 90 years, produces much more complex and pleasant looking color modes than other camera producers. In my opinion and from what I've seen at least. That's it for the theory bit. Let's actually see some X-T4 footage. These are all the film simulations you get in the X-T4, and they also come with a short description of what they're best suited for. Exposure tips. Another thing I liked about the X-T4 was that in terms of exposure, what you see on your screen or your EVF is what you need in most cases. This is especially true when shooting in a film simulation. Well, in these tests, I didn't look at the camera exposure meter at all. Why not just shoot an F-log and then use a film emulation option in post-production? Essentially, there's two main options for post-production work. A LUT or a plugin. A lot is pretty restrictive when it comes to fine-tuning such as adjustments for contrast or for the film color. So then in come the plugins. The developers give you many more options to play with for your film looks such as color temperature, exposure, mix, curve, film color opacity. We have the Film Convert Pro plugin, so we're super happy with it and we've used it many times before. Let's put it to the test. I got some F-Log footage shot in the same lighting set as the Eterna test and I tried to make them look the same.
The conclusion is that even using film convert, I still need to do quite a bit of work to get the F-Lock to look very similar to the film simulation. And the end result is still not the same. Getting the skin tone to look very close to the in-camera Eterna resulted in other colors being slightly shifted or off. I'm not saying it can't be done, but personally I can't get it to look exactly the same, without masks for a different part of the image at least. The same thing goes for the other film simulations that I've looked at. For Sony, there are two different menus that change your image appearance, namely picture effect and creative style, which obviously you can only apply if you shoot JPEG, not RAW. I have to admit that I usually shoot RAW and process the image in Lightroom using Adobe Color Profiles. I've never even checked to see if there are camera matching options. This idea was just brought about to me by someone who commented on our previous video. Turns out that they do exist, however, you have much fewer options than what you have in camera. For Fuji X-T4, you will be pleasantly surprised to know that you can get the option of applying all the film simulations on your RAW files in Lightroom, and they look as good as in video. Here's the overall conclusion of this video, i.e. why Fujifilm simulations are the greatest. They've got great color mapping and great skin tones. You can apply all film simulations to both video and raw photos with great results. You have a bigger selection than other cameras manufacturers, picture mode selection, and better quality. Film simulations minimize the noise in the shadows if you're shooting at a higher ISO. In the Fuji X-T4 case would be about ISO 1600, and they're easy to expose. I would almost consider buying a Fujifilm camera just for their film simulations. Thank you for watching this, that's it for today, and see you next time. Bye.